Today is April the 24th, 2018. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University, and today I'm in Stillwater on the campus to speak with Roland Willis, and this is part of our Oklahoma's Conservation Heritage Oral History Project, and Roland was a soil conservationist for 35 years-ish, around in there? Yeah, around that, in that's there. close enough. <laughs> Okay, so let's begin with learning a little bit about you. When and where were you born? I was born in a little place called Knox City, Texas, August the 28th, 1932. And tell us a little bit about your parents. My my parents, uh, my, my dad, uh, we, we farmed, but he had a feed store. And uh, uh, he was a veteran of World War I, fought in France. And when he and mother, <coughs> uh, they got married after the war and went to Pie Town, New Mexico and, and homesteaded. <coughs> uh, built a log cabin uh, and they lived their claim out. And I, and I tell folks, uh, hey, Blinken wouldn't have had a thing on me if I'd have come along a little sooner. I could have been born in a log cabin too, mm -hmm. but they moved back to Texas. Uh, the, the, it never did rain in New Mexico. <laughs> and I understand your dad was in a, a unit that code talkers? No. No? No. I, well, I gave his helmet. I had my dad's helmet, uh, 36th Division, and the code talkers were in it. Okay. So I gave it to Darrell to give the Choctaw uh, Museum my dad's helmet because they didn't have one. It, it had a star, <coughs> pardon me, it had an arrowhead with a T, and that stood for Texas and Oklahoma. Okay. And uh, so, no, he was not a code dogger. Okay. Well, I knew he wasn't, but I thought he might have served with no, one. No, no. He, he was a, <coughs> what they call a machine gunner, and uh, he, uh, uh, he was, anyway, he was uh, he was in in France, and they were supposed to drove back across uh, or transport them back across <coughs> France to the coast to come back, and they had to walk. <laughs> they didn't have to, they didn't get transported. Well, were you an, an only child, or? Yeah, uh, see, mother and dad got married about 1920, and I didn't come along till 1932. And that was uh, the heart of the Dust Bowl. Yeah. And the uh, uh, thing I remember most about the Dust Bowl was I contracted dust pneumonia and missed a whole year of school. With, with uh, If it hadn't been for the uh, good Lord and my mother's love and mustard plasters, I wouldn't be here. That was before they had any kind of antibiotics. That was the treatment? Yeah. Yeah. Well, where did you go to school, ele elementary school? I went to uh, elementary and high school in, in Knox City. Uh, and, uh, it was a small school. We only had 15 in our graduating class. And I was as ill prepared for college as anybody could be because they only offered 16 courses. And they didn't offer them all in one year. They had to rotate. That <laughs> but you wanted to go to college, evidently. Well, uh, yes, and I had a lot of encouragement. My dad only had an eighth grade education, and then he wanted he wanted me to to get an education, but he also wanted me to uh, uh, be prepared for war, so he wanted me to go where they had ROTC, and I went to a little junior college, uh, Stephenville, which was a subsidiary of Texas A and M before I went on down to Texas A&M, and I graduated from there with a degree in agronomy. Okay. What year did you graduate from high school? 1949. 49, and then A&M? 1953. 53, okay. Well, in high school, did you have a favorite subject? Football. <laughs> that counts, I guess, huh? <laughs> uh, <coughs> typing. Uh, 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 of item of interest, <coughs> uh, they established the Soil Conservation Service office in Knox City, 
uh, when I was in high school. And, and the district conservationist, they call them work unit conservationists, his name was Charlie Cape, and Maxine Cape was his wife, and they were both Oklahoma State University graduates. And uh, so my, my and, they, and Maxine taught me four of those 16 uh, classes. So I've got a, had a lot of admiration for uh, Oklahoma State. They didn't talk you into coming here though, huh? No. Uh, <laughs> It was a lot cheaper. To get, uh, <clears throat> at that time, uh, you could uh, uh, go pretty cheap. I didn't have any money, and uh, uh, so I uh, went, 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 work, work some, and uh, uh, during summers, uh, worked in the oil field, first one thing or another. Uh, but it was. Uh, Good, good experience. So, how did you get interested in agronomy, agronomy at uh, Texas A&M? Well, I, I changed my major three times, and I found out I had better grades in agronomy. So, the late my senior year, I changed to agronomy and got a degree in, in agronomy. And uh, I, I actually I changed my major so many times that I didn't uh, have any electives any time. But I had enough, uh, broad enough uh, coursework that I qualified as a range conservationist, soil conservationist, or soil scientist. So I couldn't have been better equipped. To, and I had a I had a minor in uh, military science. I, uh, <laughs> I had four, uh, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight semesters of military science. Well, that made your dad happy. Pardon me. That oh, made yeah. your father yeah. happy. It, it was a good thing. It, it was a good thing because they first at A and M they furnished my clothes. I didn't have to buy any clothes. And they, <laughs> anyway, uh, tuition was only twenty five dollars a semester. How does that compare with OSU today? <laughs> well, it doesn't. No, <laughs> twenty five dollars. And it's, at what point did you get married? Uh, okay. That's a good question. Uh, June and I uh, uh, got married. I got out uh, in June, had my first paycheck from SCS. Already had orders to report to Parks Air Force Base to go to Korea, and she was going to live with her folks. Uh, we got married on uh, July the 2nd uh, in, in 1953, so I only had, only had one, one paycheck. Anyway, uh, before I got ready to go, well, I got a letter that, that they canceled my orders because the Korean War was winding down. That was the happiest day in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't want to leave my bride. Uh, so that's uh, 65 years, July the 2nd of this year. She's put up with me an awful long time. <laughs> and, uh, bless her heart. <laughs> She's got a big Texas heart, so there you go. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> Speaking of hearts, uh, I've had some heart uh, uh, problems, and uh, my doctor told me I uh, only had about half of a heart, and I, and I tell folks, my wife tells me that's all I ever had is about <laughs> half a heart. <laughs> so your first job out of the chute was with Soil Conservation yes. Service? Yes, well, that was my first uh, Permanent job. Permanent. The year before, I worked as a student trainee uh, at San Angelo, and also went off to six weeks of uh, ROTC training in uh, 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 California. Well, with the conservation, was it in Texas, or was it? Did you have to leave the state? Oh no, the, my first. Uh, oh. I worked all over Texas. Uh, I, uh, I think we lived in about seven or eight locations in Texas. First six years, uh, we had uh, Christmas in six different towns and had three children. And June was kind of tired of moving. And uh, <laughs> she was born in Conroe, which is uh, 
Piney Woods, East Texas, and I was from West Texas, north of Abilene. But anyway, we moved, after I got out of the service, we moved to Big Spring, which was the height of the drought. And, and I moved there, well, I'd already worked in two locations uh, before I went in the Air Force. Anyway, when we got out this, uh, we went to Big Spring, it rained four inches there that year. And I didn't know whether she was gonna stay with me or not, <laughs> but she did. And our, old, our middle daughter was born in Big Spring, okay. Nancy. And then from there, just take us through. Pardon me? Just take us through your career from there. What, all your different moves. <laughs> Well, I, I, I started out as a student trainee in, in San Angelo. My, my first job assignment when I got out of school at a and my first paycheck was Waco, Texas, and we moved to uh, San Marcos, Texas. And then from uh, San Marcos, Texas, I went in the Air Force, the Shepherd Air Force Base. And when I got out, we went to Big Spring, and from Big Spring to Robert Lee, from Robert Lee to Littlefield, and Littlefield to Lubbock, and from Lubbock to Indianapolis, and from Indianapolis to Oklahoma. Well, that's a roundabout way of getting here, huh? Yeah, and, and uh, uh, this was, uh, uh, but it was all good. I mean, but this was, uh, uh, I was, I was happy to get to come back to where you could see the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> And it took about 15 or 20 years to, to do all of that, didn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. To yeah. Uh, we moved to Oklahoma in 72, so we've been here most of our life, over over half of our life. Each one of those moves was a transfer? Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. They, they were all, all with SCS. And, uh, a pay raise each time? Well, uh, almost. And in, in our agency, you usually only had one one job of, of of a grade. If you wanted to advance, you had to you had to move. And uh, uh, that's just the way. That's just. I I told folks our job was a little like school teachers and preachers. We just had to move around once in a while. Well, on a typical day, what would you have? To, what would be in your job to do? There was no typical day. No typical day. Every, every day was different. It was a, a challenge, and uh, uh, that's, that's one reason I like the work, because uh, uh, it was not routine, was not monotonous. We had to, and it was a big challenge. Every day you went to work, it was a challenge, and uh, uh, trying, trying to help people. That was the main thing, and uh, concern for uh, improving their livelihood and taking care of the soil. All in, all in one fell swoop. Well, as a soil conservationist, uh, what would you do out in the field? You did, did you do the surveys, soil surveys? Well, I work, went to work as a range conservationist, and so I did range surveys and, and, and uh, did conservation planning on, on ranches. And uh, that was uh, until I went into a Work unit conservationists. Then we had we did it all. I mean, we had it all there. But that, my early career was as a range conservationist, okay. and that and that was in Texas. And uh, so most of your customers would be just the average citizens. <laughs> yes, with uh, with farmers and ranchers. Okay. Yeah. Would you have to convince them the the best way to do something? Well, uh, yeah, uh, there, there's lots. Of, you had to be a salesman. Yeah, you had to sell conservation. That's right. What kind of conservation practices typically would you work with in Texas? Well, uh, of course, making uh, uh, conservation plans. They, in later times, they developed what they call a Great Plains Conservation Program. Uh, for that area, and it was a complete plan, whatever the land needed, uh, terraces, waterways, ponds, fences, grass seeding, uh, uh, land leveling, sprinkler irrigation systems, ditch, uh, anyway, that, the whole the whole ball of wax in, in, in conservation, and uh, uh, 
I had an early experience uh, with the watershed program. Uh, and when I was a work unit conservationist at uh, Robert Lee, uh, the uh, local people got behind a, a watershed program and put up all the money for planting. They, they furnished, furnished the SCS money to plan the watershed. Mm -hmm. And then I left. I didn't get to see it built. I moved, moved from there uh, to, to Littlefield. And, uh, what year would have that been? That would have been in, uh, I don't know, about, about 1958, somewhere mm -hmm. along in there. Mm -hmm. And a uh, long, long time ago. That's a long time ago. Well, if they offered, they got, gave the money, then getting easements wasn't a problem there? Uh, well, what the deal was, uh, it wasn't, uh, it was a start. Uh, the people that were interested, they went around and got everybody's signature in the watershed saying that they would give an appropriate easement. Mm -hmm. Everybody. That was how bad they wanted it. They had a lot of, it was a water problem. I, I don't think that ever happened anywhere else. And uh, But all that was built after I left. Uh, the, the, but the watershed was, was, was built after I left. Was that for flood control or water yeah. supply? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, yeah, I remember the guy that went around and got all the names. His name was Futhi Higginbottom. Higginbottom. We won't be able to spell that right. <laughs> no. Anyway, he, he, he got everybody to sign a deal that they could give the easement to have one. Boy, they were glad that anybody was glad to have a, a, a structure. Have you gone back since then to see the structures that no. resulted from that? Have you ever seen them? No. What was a typical size farm that the farmers and ranchers you'd work with? How many acres would typically would they? Would they have? Oh, uh, the ranches would be up in the thousands of acres. Uh, the farmers anywhere from 160 to 320, and some of them, the big farmers, they might have had uh, you know section, and, uh, but the ranches were in the thousands of acres. And, mm -hmm. But it took a lot of land. Uh, they, <coughs> it, it, the ranching country was in dry country. It didn't rain a whole lot, so it took a lot of acres to feed a cow. <laughs> so building ponds was part of that? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We, uh, we had a flood disaster uh, where we washed out a lot of the ponds we had. Uh, that was before the, that was in the, in the early 50s. The drought was worse, or worse on the South Plains than it was in Oklahoma in the 30s. And when it finally did rain, there was a, a, such a drought, there was no, no grass, no, no protection on the land. And so it washed a lot of structures out. Had a, had a lot of re rebuilding, and that's what prompted the watershed program too, mm. you know. Well, from the ranches and then to Indianapolis, there's not were there. What would you do there? I mean, that seems like a big difference from. Well, from after I became a area conservationist, well, then I was in in management over. We had 11, 11 districts, and so it was more of a. Uh, manager job than it was a technical job, managing time, people, equipment, budgets, and uh, and then as a, when I went to Indiana, it was an assistant for operations, which it covered uh, uh, all of this, all of SCS operations in, in Indiana under under the state conservation, and uh, so I. After I became a district conservationist, I still did a lot of range work, but uh, not direct when I became a, a area, area conservationist. And uh, no, Indiana, uh, if they had it, it, it was all uh, pastures and crops and timber. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and 
and uh, do any watersheds while you were there? Well, yeah, we had an assistant for watersheds, and, and uh, they built a lot of watersheds, a lot of structures there, and so. And then you came back to Oklahoma, or not back, you came to Oklahoma. Yeah, it was like coming home. In the early 70s, if I'm... 72. 72. Yeah, yeah it, it was like, uh, to me, it was like coming home. Anyway. Uh, and first thing we did when we got here, we went and got some good Mexican food and chicken fried steak. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway. So when you came here in 1972, you came as deputy state conservationist? Right. And then you became state conservationist? In 75. In 1975. Yeah. Well, I was reading too, some of what you would do was annual, annual reports on damages from wind erosion? Yeah, yeah. Well, they made them, we had to make monthly reports whenever, during the bad erosion periods. Mm -hmm. Not, not just an annual report, we had to make monthly reports. Uh, whenever we were, at, uh, when I was area conservationist at, at Lubbock, uh, I think uh, we, we had probably, uh, sand was blowing somewhere in the area every, every day. That was, it was mostly all cropland and and uh, I'm talking about during the, during the period of drought. But the Great Plains program uh, really, uh, we put up thousands, thousands of acres back to grass, and, uh, and that's true here in Oklahoma as well. And o Oklahoma was about to wash away. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about when they were, uh, there in the Dust Bowl, and uh, the problem there was uh, most of it was homesteads on 160 acres, and uh, a lot of it wasn't really suitable for, for, for cultivation, and so there was a lot of erosion and wind erosion, water and wind erosion, but the, the Great Plains Conservation Program and, and other cost share programs uh, uh, did a lot, a good job of land treatment in, in, in the state of Oklahoma. And if they did, if they participated in that, then they couldn't cultivate? No, that's not true, but the land that was not suitable for cultivation. Okay. Yeah. They would get cost share to assist in getting yeah. vegetation established. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've been all over the state? Yes in your job, as part of your job? Yes. Yeah. Including when they did the final final soil survey in, in Muskogee County, the last one for the state? Yeah, I was, I was here. Yeah. That was under your watch? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I, I, was, I was here. Okay. Uh, yeah, it wasn't under my watch. I mean, we, uh, we, we worked as a team, Larry can tell you that. Uh, and I, I tried to give all of our staff a great, great deal of leeway to do their job and, and, and stay out of their way. Well, about how long would it take to do a county soil survey? I mean, uh, I don't have any I, idea. I, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. A year, two years longer? Well, sometimes they had to uh, uh, move, move out and move back. I don't know. Uh, I can't. I can't say a time time frame. Uh, I wouldn't want. To, I had. I wouldn't want to try to answer that question. I would imagine it would take a take a while to do that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Three to four years, many times. Yeah. 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 The thing that strikes me with your period of the career, there was a lot of new acts and laws that came in for NEPA, Historic Preservation, Endangered Species. Yeah. It seemed like there was a time, you came through that time when they were all yeah. getting established. That had to be a challenge to try let, to, to let, let me Let me back up. Uh, before I came to Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma was leading the nation in conservation. 
uh, uh, they they were one of the first ones to uh, uh, really get behind soil and water conservation. And so a lot of the watershed work and, and a lot of the good work had already been, uh, had been accomplished. Uh, and uh, this was a real honor to get to come and serve in, in a state that had done such a good job. Well, would you have to go to the Capitol? We had several tours for the congressman senators out here in Oklahoma and showed them what was, what was going on. Uh, and, and that was a good thing. And, and most of them were well informed. But we were blessed with having a good working relationship uh, with all the agencies here. And everybody was doing their, the, the conservation districts were the thing that made Oklahoma the conservation state it, it was or is. Mm. Uh, one of the first presidents of the National Association uh, was Nolan Fuquay uh, from Duncan, Oklahoma. He was one of the first presidents of the National Association of Conservation Districts. And, uh, uh, I, I don't know what year that would have been long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you would participate in those? Attend? You would attend conferences and things? Oh, I, I attended some conferences in yeah. Washington, yes. Yeah. And, and well, did you interact with the uh, Conservation Commission here in Oklahoma? <laughs> well, yes, we, we were partners <laughs> with, with the Conservation Commission. And do you remember it? Any of the directors, specifically? All of them. All of them. Yeah, well, there were several that came in in the period of time. They all all went. I mean, uh, Leonard Solomon was the director of the uh, conservation commission. Whenever I became state conservationist, but they were. Uh, anyway. Anything specific you remember about him? Well, he was yes, he was a, he was a very good uh, administrator, and uh, uh, everybody liked Leonard Solomon. Yeah. And where was he from? Well, I think it was somewhere over around Ada, uh, okay. Lightning Ridge. That's what he. That's all he, where he claimed to be home, Light, Lightning Ridge. Mm -hmm wherever that is. <laughs> <coughs> I think it's not far from Ada. And uh, Larry was telling me that uh, that his wife just passed away. And, uh, and then after Leonard retired, then Mason? Yeah, Mason Mongo. Mason Mongo. And, and Mason uh, uh, really, Mason and I, Work together real, real well, just like we do with Solomon. Well, who was the state conservationist before you came? Well, Hampton Burns. Uh, he was, uh, I think Hampton came here in 72. He was only a state conservationist for a short time. He had taken a, a lateral from Florida, he had been state conservationist in Florida before he moved to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. But he was, he was from, uh, he'd worked in Arkansas and uh, he wanted to get back west too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so do they normally stay two or three years or just you stay as long as you want? You sure didn't stay as long as you want. <laughs> uh, some, of, some of them, uh, uh, I, I stayed uh, a little longer, maybe too long. I don't know. Uh, I, I retired on my 55th birthday. And I, I, I kidded folks and said, well, I thought I'd better retire while I still had a few friends left. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that had been my plan all, all along. I was going to retire if I thought we could, you know, manage our, our uh, retirement. And, uh, 
I, I planned to retire on, on my birthday. And that was, uh, you, you could retire 55. And so I had 36 years counting my military time, right at 36. I just seems so young to be retiring these days. Uh, yes, uh, but I've enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> it was, uh, June thought, I, uh, she said, oh, you, you, you're going to uh, regret, you know, but I've enjoyed all of it. Uh, I, there is another life, so I'm telling you, Tom, <laughs> and Larry. Well, Larry already knows. <laughs> but I, uh, uh, I had a lot of other interests still do. And Bird dogs, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> and, uh, but also looking after, there's a lot of work around uh, 20 acres <laughs> between that and, yeah. Well, how did you spend your last week on the job, or last day even? Well, trying to make as many field offices as I could, not in the state office. Got out on the road. Out on the road. I think one of the last ones, the last day, I think I was in Freedom, Oklahoma. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I think Darrell reminded me that I, that I came out there on, I think it was the last day. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I was not much of an office person. Now, I understand they have spent quite a bit of time in the office with computers and so on. But, uh, uh, my most enjoyable times were being out in the field with the personnel and, and seeing, seeing work. During the 12 years where you were state conservationist, what are some of the best accomplishments or the, the things you're most proud of that happened during that period of time? <laughs> well, uh, I think the most proud of was, was the staff uh, that were able to, to do their job. And, uh, uh, and uh, our, one of the big jobs we had was trying to, uh, we had to, over 400 people working, and but as the budgets got tighter and tighter, we had to uh, try to manage to where we wouldn't have to uh, close any of the field offices. And we had to make some adjustments in the state office and area offices. And, but uh, I, I was proud of all the jobs that everybody did in the state of Oklahoma, whatever it was. Uh, no, no, nothing specific. Nothing specific. What were some of the biggest challenges you had to deal with during that 12 year period? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that I had a saying, uh, always keep your bucket out. And <clears throat> we, we uh, biggest challenge is we're trying to get enough money to pay for watershed structures, to pay people. So a big challenge was, was uh, uh, trying to ensure that Oklahoma got its fair share and then we'd take anything else that anybody didn't use if they didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> and we picked up some extra money in, in what watershed. Some states were not organized as well as Oklahoma mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, they'd, they'd get money and uh, if they didn't use it, well, uh, we had them <laughs> on the shelf ready to build, still do. <laughs> It was, it's, it's nothing but a pleasure uh, working in, in o Oklahoma. Was it a 40-hour-a-week job? Uh, no. More? No. I, uh, we didn't have what they call overtime then. <laughs> we didn't have uh, comp time. Uh, you worked whatever the job took, and I made an awful lot of night, night meetings. And, uh, one of the most interesting meeting, I went out, I think it was at uh, uh, Guyman. And so we didn't have uh, cell phones and any of those things. And I went to the meeting and, and drove back home that night. And I couldn't get to the office because we had a tornado. <laughs> I don't remember when that was, but I remember that. Yeah. There wasn't any, uh, uh, it, 
It was just part of the job, whatever time it took, you know, nights, weekends, and and uh, I don't know whether it's that way anymore or not, but it, that's the way it was when I worked. And that was that was part of the job. That was part of the job. You you got got paid for eight hours, but you was on the job until it was done. Huh? Forty eight hours. But so that's the way I looked at it. And the the state office was here in Stillwater. Yes, it was still here. Yeah. Instead of instead of Oklahoma City. Yeah, they it had been in Oklahoma City, but they moved it to Stillwater, which was a, a good thing, and uh, close to the. To the university, and uh, uh, that's where most of the graduates. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, uh, most of the employees came from OSU. You know. Yeah. Uh, you were saying this. You were the first state conservationist in this building in the state office. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they just uh, completed it. Uh, I don't remember now what year it was. Now, uh, I guess it must have been '76, and, uh, and whenever we we moved out of the old office, moved and moved over here. Yeah. That was a that was a, a good good move because we moved the design section in here. Also, it'd been in a separate building, and uh, that. Uh, uh, the watershed design section of and uh, that was that was a good thing. That would be the engineers. Yes. Mostly. Yes. <clears throat> and I'll, I'm probably going to think of a lot of other things uh, <laughs> whenever we get all all through. That happens. Yes. And, uh, uh, it's all all good. All good. I was thinking, who was governor then? At in the I don't know. We had a bunch of them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> was George Nye? He was at one time, mm -hmm. and uh, really didn't impact what you did. Pardon me. It didn't impact what you did. Change the change in governor's administration. Uh, since we were since we were were federal, of course, we we worked with it. In close cooperation, but our ours was a federal agency and not a not a state agency. Okay. So it's when the president changed. Pardon me. That, then it was when the presidents changed that may have made a difference. Look over on the wall. Enough <laughs> 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 said. Enough said. I guess. <laughs> You worked under a lot of different uh, Secretary of Agriculture's and, and chiefs during that, that period. Yeah. Did, did that change your change the work or programs? Uh, I'm, I'm sure it did. But uh, we were, during the time I worked, we were probably working during the best of times in terms of getting, uh, uh, we had the programs to help get conservation on the land. And uh, I, I, I consider myself very fortunate to uh, uh, not say uh, Oklahoma had already built uh, a, a good reputation uh, for all types of work, and we were still very fortunate to have a. a we had, I think, it might have been, we had about the second or third biggest budget at, at one time. And, and most of it was due, due to the watershed program, because mm -hmm. we were building lots of structures. Mm -hmm. And uh, Was there one you wanted to get built that, that didn't get built? A third of them <laughs> that didn't get built. For what reasons? Money. Money. Well, was it also hard to convince the landowner to give? Well, see, that was uh, that was not our responsibility. That was the responsibility of the local conservancy districts, uh, and uh, uh, that was a good thing. Uh, they uh, they were they were the uh, sponsoring agency and and uh, secured the easements, and uh, uh, 
most people were were very cooperative. Uh, they, they might, I'm, I'm sure there were some that didn't want it, but they were few and far between because uh, most people re recognize the value of how uh, flood pre uh, flood prevention. And, This is not the record. When we first moved here, we looked at houses, and we found a little house uh, out east of Stillwater on a, on, on a creek, but big old pecan trees were growing, and we really liked it. And I got back and, and asked our hydrologist uh, about buying this house, and he said, well, in 57, it would have had eight feet of water in it. So we decided not to, <laughs> not to buy it. That's just a side like No, well, what, would that be some of the, the, the average citizen would come and ask a question like that before buying something? Probably not. Probably not. You just knew who to ask. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, uh, well, I thought it was kind of, I was, uh, <laughs> I was apprehensive. So, I, but sure enough, that's what I figured it would have had been. 57 was a bad flood in, in uh, uh, Oklahoma, but I guess it was a 100-year flood or more. Mm -hmm. Did you end up going to a lot of Conservation District board meetings talking about watershed projects coming up and, and starting yeah, watershed I, projects? I, one time or another, I probably attended a, a high percentage of mm -hmm. Conservation District, individual district meetings. Uh, over a period of time, I, I don't know what you know. I didn't, I didn't attend all of them, but I attended a bunch of them. And we had area meetings uh, of conservation. I made all of those. Uh, they were joint meetings with the uh, conservation commission. And then they had an annual meeting of uh, uh, conservation districts, and still do. And, Well, the state's got such a variety of geography and stuff. It seems like each district would have its own own problems. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, uh, they didn't have problems. They all each had their opportunities. Opportunities, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, opportunities. Good and bad, huh? I always talked about opportunities and not and not not problems. <laughs> well, who was your mentor mentor along the way? Did you have one? A hundred. You had a hundred? Yeah, everybody I worked with was was a mentor. Larry Larry Carwell Carwell was a mentor. <laughs> well, I mean, we we all helped each other. Well, I mean, early on, like your first couple of years, did you have someone that was? All the people okay. I worked with. Okay. All of them. No, 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 no particular one. Uh, I learned uh, some of my best uh, training was with, uh, uh, in the early days, was with uh, uh, conservation district technicians. I learned more from them about working with people. About 90% of the job, 95% of the job is, is working with, with people. And that's what I, I told folks. Uh, uh, sure, you need to be trained, but that's only five percent, mm -hmm. and that, and that's true. If if you don't, if you can't communicate and work with people, it don't make any difference if you're Einstein. <laughs> so, what did did you have to fire anyone along the way? No, some of them quit, but mm -hmm. as far as I, <laughs> no, we didn't have uh, that was. That was a fortunate thing. Mm -hmm. I had a, a lot of a lot of a lot of good good folks. You formed a good team with a lot of from a lot of different leaders and different oh, programs. Yeah. And yeah. Don Vandersipen with Watershed Program was one of the nation's right. leaders. And it was. Uh, It, it, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. I may have already said that that our job was a lot like 
preachers and teachers, we we just had to move once in a while, and and uh, sometimes people didn't want to move, but uh, but if they wanted to advance, they had to. Uh, just just like Larry, he probably didn't want to come to Oklahoma, but but it, but it was an opportunity, so he came the best best decision he ever made in his life. <laughs> exactly right. Well, well, if you hadn't retired, would you were you considering the next level up? Or would you go next? I was there. You were there? Yeah. Okay. I was there. You reached your ultimate goal there. Pardon me? You reached your ultimate goal. Yes. Yes. I, uh, I had an opportunity uh, before I came to Oklahoma. Uh, uh, I was called and, and wanted me to go to Alaska to state conservationist. <laughs> and uh, I would have loved to have gone. But my mother was living with us in Indiana, and I figured at her age that would be a bad thing. And uh, so we we uh, we declined that, and uh, I was glad I, glad I did. And, uh, yeah, I, I had some other opportunities, but I, uh, this is this this was the only one. After I got this, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't want to go anywhere else. So once you retired, how have you stayed involved with what's going on? Uh, well, some of us have coffee once in a while. <laughs> and uh, anyway, <laughs> I was trying to think of something else that it was kind of funny. I'm, uh, it's already passed by now. Uh, you 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 lost it. <laughs> well, once you retired, did you stop stop attending the association meetings and yes. the planes too? Yes, and I and I I, I had seen people that uh, uh, didn't know wh when to retire, and uh, but I when I retired, I, I retired, and uh, I, I I figured I I had, I had served my twelve years and. and I didn't try to uh, influence anybody else. Uh, I don't know if they took, took my place. Or but you've stayed in touch with them, or you wouldn't be... Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I think I had a lot of friends. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't... Uh, I still had a few friends when I retired. <laughs> they call and ask advice? What would you do? <laughs> I don't think anybody ever called me. <laughs> I told them... <laughs> Uh, I don't recall that. Well, maybe. I don't know. I told this man here, he's better off here than Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah, June, June told me I could go to Washington, but she wasn't going. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't have gone anyway. Oh, yeah. I had a chance when I was in Indiana to go to Washington uh, before. I, uh, but I, uh, that's the best decision I ever made, not going. Not going. Uh, it, you know, it's... Uh, have you... Have you been to the national office? They're little, uh, it's a cubicle. You have a cubicle. You know what a cubicle is? I do, yes. Uh, you may have a cubicle. Used to, <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, uh, when we lived in Indiana, uh, the state office was in downtown Indianapolis. We lived in Brownsburg. It was about a 45 minute to an hour drive one one way to work and you had to pay for your parking and uh, when I got to then they finally moved out to Speedway Indiana that's where they have their uh, uh, race car races but uh, anyway uh, it was it was sort of a bad omen I mean, we liked Indiana, and, and, and we bought a farm there and, and kept it for it a tree farm down in southern Indiana. But our, our first welcome to Indiana was not good. We, we uh, had a travel trailer, and my mother and June and the three daughters, a dachshund, two dachshunds, one of them had puppies en route. And when we got to Indianapolis, I wanted to see where we were going to work. It was right across the street in the state capitol. We, we pulled in, 
and, and parked our trailer at a Holiday Inn, I think, right across from the Capitol. And that night, it got broke into and stole all my mother's clothes. And I, I checked on her insurance, and my insurance was void when it left Texas. It was a Texas agriculture worker's car insurance. So, and it was snowing. So it, uh, 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 <laughs> it wasn't a very good welcome. <laughs> but anyway, we, we, uh, we found a nice place to live. And, and, uh, uh, I don't have anything to do with well, that. I mean, a tree farm, that's interesting. So when you moved here, you bought more acreage. Well, uh, yeah, we, we kept that up there for about 30 years. It was in southern Indiana, a mm -hmm. beautiful place, and uh, down close to Spring Mill State Park. We had lots of, had a, a stream, a spring-fed stream of water ran through it. I just wish we could have moved that here because it, it was a beautiful place. Yeah. Do any conservation practices there on it? All that I could, all that I could do. <laughs> yeah, they had uh, timber stand improvement, tree plantings, and uh, yeah, it, it was a well improved place. Mm. And uh, we ended up uh, keeping it 30 years, but. Uh, we had some pretty good timber, and uh, this is not for this. Record. It's fine, yes. You're doing anyway, good. Anyway, uh, it got to the point where uh, there were timber thieves, and, and it's too far to look after. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we sold it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, we, we bought a little acreage. Uh, oh, we, we'd been here a while. And uh, before we bought that. So your welcome to Oklahoma was a little bit better it was than out, Indiana? It was outstanding, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. We, uh, uh, it, it provided an opportunity where the, the kiddos could go to school here. And, uh, all three of our daughters uh, uh, went here. Two of them got a degree from o OSU. Lisa, the one that passed away, she she was an OSU graduate, and she was in conservation too, wasn't she? Yeah, that's a, of all my uh, uh, good good memories. A lot of them was seeing her career. Uh, she she when she retired, she was state conservationist in in, in Delaware, and at that time. I had the longest tenure of any state conservation, mm -hmm. uh, man or woman. Mm -hmm. That was my next question. There's not too many women at that. No, at that she, time. Was, she was one of the first, and I'm. I'm uh, she, not because she was our daughter, but she was an unusual lady, and uh, she. Uh, uh, they had a, a, what have you ever heard of, Outstanding Young Women of America program. Mm -hmm. Every year there's a book about that thick of nominations over the United States. And uh, I think it was about, I don't know, in, in the late 80s, she was selected as one of the 10 outstanding young women in the whole country. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, of all, uh, if you want to talk about accomplishments, uh, that uh, that was one of my biggest prides was in my daughter. Mm -hmm. All my daughter, but but, uh, but she made a, a little story on her. She went. She had a scholarship, uh, Ball State, Indiana, when we moved to Oklahoma. So she went to Ball State. And majored in uh, natural resources or something bad like major, and she went there uh, two years, and and she she came home, and uh, uh, and she said, uh, I want I want to transfer to OSU. And I said, well, that's that's good, and uh, uh, that that pleased us, you know. 
So anyway, uh, she uh, uh, majored in horticulture with a degree in land landscape design. So long towards her, uh, she was coming along. I said, "Well, uh, what are you going to do?" And she said, "Well." I think I want to work for the Soil Conservation Service. I said, Soil Conservation Service? I said, why? She said, well, you've enjoyed your work. Mm -hmm. So she, she followed in, in, uh, in my footsteps, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and <coughs> she was also a student trainee. She was born in Texas while we were in the Air Force, Shepherd Air Force Base. Anyway, she applied for a student trainee job, and. Uh, in Arkansas and, and Texas, and she heard from both of them offering her a job. And I, she said, which one should I do? What should I do? I said, who offered you a job first? Arkansas. I said, I'd go to Arkansas. And that was, that was good. She was probably the first lady yeah. that she worked in Little Rock, and she was a district conservationist there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, when she, uh, she floored me when she said she, she wanted to go to work for Soil Conservation Service. <laughs> but I think she did a pretty good job, a whole lot better than I did, probably. She had to move several times, too, to... Well, she lived in two locations in uh, Arkansas, and she lived in uh, uh, Maryland and, and Dover. So she didn't have to near, move near as much as, as we did. But part of our move was because I had to go in the service of the Air Force. That, uh, uh, that cost one of the moves, or two of the moves. But she uh, had a good mentor. Yes. Pardon me? She had a good mentor. Uh, I don't know about yes. that, but anyway, she... Uh, and then the, the CSC paid for you to, or encouraged you to go get a master's degree? I, I have the state conservationist in Indiana to thank for that. Uh, I, they had a program where you could go on a GI, GI Bill, mm -hmm. and I told him that I was going. Well, I came down here. They had a training program at, at OU uh, that I went to, and I, when I got back, I told him that I was going to uh, uh, take annual leave. It might take me a while. So I was going to get uh, uh, some military. Or, assistance for being a veteran and uh, one day he called me in his office and he said I believe you you're really serious about the program and I said yeah I'm, I'm serious now and he said well uh, we're going to pay for it mm -hmm. and uh, did you ever know Don Bivens mm -hmm. well Don, Don was assistant for watersheds, and, and he, he got approval for both. I finished it up after I got here, but uh, uh, it was all, uh, I could only take one course every three months, and it took a long time to get the master's. But it, you go to a week of intensive lecture, and they usually concluded with a comprehensive exam. Uh, but then I got a master's in what they call public administration, which was good. I mean, it, it was a, it, it was a good good thing, and and helped me prepare, you know, for this job too. Is that something that they normally they do typically to help help employees go to school? Well, we did uh, did here in in o Oklahoma after I got here. Well, we sent, uh, or I say we Hamburns. I guess with state conservationists, but uh, uh, Jim Smith, uh, he, he's deceased. Uh, J Jimmy Hill went. And, uh, anyway, uh, so we, we, I guess it started uh, something. It, it took a special. But we also made arrangements for some folks uh, to go back to, to college uh, while they were working here, you know. And I think, uh, which was a good good thing for the agency to do. There were some soil conservation technicians who went on to become engineers. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. The yeah. opportunities that yeah. we wanted to get. That was, that was a good thing. 
during your tenure, you had uh, you took on some leadership roles in professional organizations with Soil Conservation Society. What, what are some of the highlights you had during your <laughs> tenure there? Well, uh, I, I don't know what how that started, but I got interested in the Soil Conservation Society of America. They've changed the name of it now. Anyway, over a period of time, well, I was active, and so uh, somebody asked me uh, to run for national office. Well, I didn't know about that, but anyway, I did. Uh, you had to go through, go from I don't remember four or five steps. You had to be elected for every one of them. But now I don't know what they do now. But anyway, um, I, you had to, Vice President, President elect, President, and I don't know. Anyway, uh, I got to serve as a national president of the Soil Conservation Society of America, and their headquarters is in Ankeny. And uh, that was a uh, uh, good experience. Uh, got to participate in several things as the president. One was uh, had a commemoration for Hugh Hammond Bennett. I got to go to that, uh, where his his home. They had it. Uh, he'd been one of the uh, first chiefs. And anyway, yeah. And you hosted the uh, national convention in Oklahoma well, City. Yeah, didn't I didn't have anything to do with that, though. That, that was a big <laughs> deal. <laughs> no, well, that was uh, the. the uh, Local society, uh, they uh, that wasn't didn't have anything to do with me at all. I, I just went to what they did. Len, Leonard Solomon was a big promoter of that, and uh, but those those belt buckles over there on the wall, uh, they some of the one of the districts sold those about that time to raise money, uh, but uh, they were they were pretty popular. Yeah, that was it was a we had a good good crowd. Were you did you come to that? Mm -hmm. It was a big crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was good. It was a good meeting. I forgot about it. a couple thousand people there. Yeah. yeah. I'll always remember that uh, uh, one of the men cooked some rattlesnake, and I'll never ever eat another <laughs> bite of rattlesnake. That was a, that was the foulest tasting stuff <laughs> I ever tried. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and. Uh, I was a lot younger then, and they had a, a mechanical bull, and uh, so uh, somebody challenged me to get on that mechanic, mechanical bull. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what that would have been in the wind, '84. '84. Yeah, yes. I, I was state conservationist then, but uh, I wasn't very smart getting on that mechanical <laughs> bull. Stayed a minute or two. Uh, that's about all. I didn't get. <laughs> bucked off, but they didn't run it very fast. <laughs> it, it was a good meeting. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, tours of uh, uh, horse ranches and uh, uh, everything else. But that was, those, were, those were the good old days. Mm -hmm. Well, back, didn't they, they, they changed the way they appoint the chief? I mean, it went from being a career appointment to a political appointment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have anything to say about that? Well, some were good and some were not so good. <laughs> it, it, it did change things. Yeah. And Peter Myers was the first one in yeah, the early and, 80s. And, uh, he, he was a good one. Was a good one. And uh, that was uh, when Peter Myers, I, I think you said you knew him, didn't you? From Missouri. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Peter Myers was the chief whenever uh, that I got nominated and received a USDA Superior Service Award. And we, we, have, we, have, we have pictures of all the girls uh, went, and uh, that was a good time together. And we, I've got a picture hanging in the, in the house of the family. Uh, somebody made it, we were just walking down the street, and it's just a snapshot. But that's, that's one of our favorite pictures. But anyway, he was, he was the chief, uh, and so, He had to finally approve that, you know, uh, but it was an uh, uh, unexpected uh, 
but o Oklahoma, uh, it, it wasn't just, it wasn't for me, it was Oklahoma programs uh, that uh, everybody was doing their job. Mm. And uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to get to go to represent uh, the state of uh, SCS. So it was a re real honor. But I wouldn't have gone if it, if it hadn't been for folks like, like Larry Caldwell and others. And then they changed the, the name of the Soil Conservation Service to the Natural Resources Conservation yeah, Service. Yeah, that was after my time. I know. I was just going to ask what your opinion was about that. Uh, I don't yeah. guess I really have one. It's whatever they want to call it. Yeah. I know during your tenure, you always took a personal concern in the performance of the watershed dams and concerns when big storms came in and how they were working and the impact that's, you would have on communities. That I know. was one of my, uh, uh, one of my, not only interests but concern uh, that uh, of having safe, safe structures. And to my knowledge, we never did have any loss of life. I think mm -hmm. there was. In the early days, I think there was some fellow got ran off in the creek or something, but it wasn't from the flood. I mean, it wasn't from the structure failure, I don't think. But uh, every time we would uh, get the big rains, I didn't sleep well. I didn't sleep well. And uh, I, and I, I prayed for some rains to stop. <laughs> uh, Larry knows all about uh, having any, uh, some of those. In. It is kind of scary when they all start running through the emergency spillways, but we never had one to, to fail. Is the one over by Boomer Lake, is that part of the watershed? Boomer Lake is one of them. Yeah. And that, was um, during, that started during your, your time? Uh, Larry and I were talking earlier, in, in the early days, a lot of the uh, structures were built with, without too much, uh, they were built for a utility, not necessarily beauty, and we, we hired a, a landscape designer, and so we tried to impress on whatever structures we built to make them pleasing to the eye, and I think Boomer's is a good example, and, and, and Larry's largely responsible uh, for that, but I think he said we got a, a, a landscape we, designer left, but, but we got one from another state, so, mm -hmm. and that, that was good. See, that that's what uh, Lisa, our daughter, she, uh, uh, they didn't have landscape design uh, here, uh, or no, they had landscape design but didn't have uh, uh, Architect. What? Landscape architect. Yeah, it wasn't landscape architect, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was the same thing, but OSU wasn't affiliated to call him an architect. But uh, that was her hobby. Uh, she had a beautiful place, and uh, she, uh, anyway, uh, we've, uh, I don't know how Oklahoma stacks up, uh, but uh, I'd say that Larry can answer that one in, in terms of uh, land land treatment and, 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 and structures. Number one. Uh, one in the first in the nation. Okay. One one time Texas uh, had had more structures than we did here in Oklahoma, but I I, I told folks that her they were scattered all over. Uh, and, and ours was the most intensive, because <laughs> smaller state than we did. But uh, uh, anyway. So there's more to be done, or have mo the majority been? No, but still, they ran out of money. Uh, when I retired, we liked about a third, um, and Larry says we're still like <laughs> pretty close to about a third. 300 left to go. And, uh, All over the state? Yeah. All over. But it's, 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 it's really prevented a lot of flooding. And also, uh, land treatment goes along with it. And uh, uh, 
Tonya, you wouldn't recognize how how eroded Oklahoma was uh, after the Dust Bowl years. I mean, gullies and blowed away and washed away. So the landowners and operators, the people who own and operate the land, are the ones to be commended that they they saw they needed to do something. And, and fortunately, our agency came along at the right time to be a help to them. But it was the people living on the land that the ones that did the job. And, uh, and uh, we should never, never, uh, never forget that. And, uh, Oklahoma has got good, good people that are interested in taking care of their re resources. And uh, uh, I'd say that there's more uh, in terms of we. Each generation needs to be educated. That's why we've got got schools to teach those things, and because uh, uh, history repeats itself. Uh, and uh, I had an opportunity uh, during my career uh, to go to, to China. They had a, I got, got to go on a, oh, I forgot what they call it now. It was an exchange commission for about a month. And uh, uh, it was just when they first uh, uh, opened up we have President Nixon to thank for that. Open, I might have opened up Pandora's box as it's turned <laughs> out. But anyway, we went over there and uh, they just just reopened the universities. Uh, during the Cultural Revolution, they closed all the universities, closed all the churches. Uh, and uh, but anyway, we went over there at a good time and, and uh, the uh, uh, Chinese government was a little uh, skeptical about us, but the people were great. They didn't know that there was a problem between the country. And uh, I read, got to go over there and spend a month. And one of the things that I remember the most, that the Yellow River carries 30 times the silt load of the Mississippi. That's how much erosion. And they had not, uh, pardon my nose is running for some reason, they had not, uh, they built structures, Larry, at, with no no vegetation. Well, the only thing they're going to do is silt out. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so my my part of the trip over there was trying to convince them that they needed to, to vegetate what they built. They, they did a good job of building, but they weren't going to last. But a uh, big argument was, well, they had to have all of that uh, whatever they raised to feed the livestock or, or, or for heat in the house. And uh, but anyway, that was uh, interesting. But I, uh, they were fine people. But when I got home, the first thing I did was kiss the ground. Uh, they were content, but they had no freedom of choice at that time. Somebody decided what they were going to do. Our, our interpreter uh, was a on a boat, a, a Chinese boat, and he was on uh, detail as our interpreter, and he was going to have to go back and get on that boat. They had, they had no, no freedom of choice. And I, I think that's changed now. But uh, When was that when you went to China? About 1980. <laughs> uh, they hadn't opened it, they just opened it up. Uh, I think there were one other group that might have gone before I got to go over there. And they had, uh, uh, oh, had an extension, head of extension uh, uh, in Ohio, his name was, uh, uh, I'd have to stop and make it a minute. Uh, anyway, and the head of the Dean of School of Agriculture from Idaho, it was a group group mixture, the fellow of ARS, and I think there were two or three of us from SCS. And uh, 
anyway, it was, it was a good experience. Were you asked to be a part of that team to go over? Uh, pardon me? Were you asked to be a part of that team? Or yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. The, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was a good, good experience. Good experience. And uh, got to see a lot of things, too, uh, while we were there. Uh, in addition to seeing the agriculture, we stayed in the communes, but we got to see the uh, terracotta figures at Sion. You, know, you may have seen where they uh, unearthed this whole army. You may not, you may not know about that. No. <laughs> well, it was quite a spectacular uh, thing. And you know about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, y'all <coughs> need to get some education, <laughs> and then we got to see the great, got to walk on the Great Wall, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we got to go up to uh, Whole Hot and and stayed in yurts. Uh, that's that's the kind of a tent that they had up there. Did June go with you? Oh no, Just no, no, she did. didn't go. Mm -hmm. No, but it, it was interesting. I'd say that was one of the highlights of my career getting to go over there. And, uh, but when you get back uh, uh, to your computer, we'll look up that uh, Sion and, and the, uh, uh, used, they used to kill all their army whenever the, the head man died, but this was a, a educated guy and so he had all these soldiers made out of clay and every one of them has a different facial expression and there, there's hundreds of them and then they've got all kinds of uh, uh, their uh, equipment they used in battle and and all that that's it was buried and it was covered for I don't know, a thousand years I guess or longer thousands of years it's kind, kind of interesting sure well, uh, the structures on the watersheds are getting to be 50 plus years old, right? The oldest is now 70. Yeah. 70? Is it still functioning? Very well. And, uh, of course, some of them had to be re rehabilitated. Larry's going to tell you all about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, they weren't supposed to last that long. I think 50 years was a life expectancy. But, uh, it's provided a lot of, uh, in addition to flood control, a lot of uh, recreation like McMurtry and and uh, that's part uh, of that was one too. And also uh, for water, uh, I think now the city of Perry, uh, Stillwater used part of it for a while, but I think Perry is now uh, because uh, Stillwater gets theirs out of the call. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but there's been a number of uh, multi-purpose structures built. There, how many? Forty-two. Forty-two. Mm -hmm. Where it was for more than just for flood control, it was for other purposes, and, and that's a good thing. A lot of them wouldn't have had any water supply then, and it's all kinds of crazy service. And there wouldn't be some communities that are there now because of that. Oh, I should say natural resource conservation service. <laughs> well, I mean, even Stillwater's had some flooding since, I mean, since oh, we yeah. moved in 96, there's been a mm -hmm. couple. Yeah. But flood over Sanger Road right. a lot, is that part mm -hmm. of? Oh, yeah. And we still, we still could have. It's not going to uh, prevent it. It'll just uh, uh, help. Uh, we, we haven't had any major floods in this area in how long? Ten years? Or more, yeah. Well, we were having them right and left for a while. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So that's a good thing. But it's not just all the conservation. It's not just all water. It's from tillage to right and 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 vegetation. Vegetation. And I think one of the biggest biggest things uh, uh, to Oklahoma's credit is a lot of the land that was unsuitable for cultivation is now back in grass. When you drive down the road, you don't see a lot of gullies. 
You don't want a gully. Yet. I do. Yes. Okay. Well, you don't you don't see them anymore, and you they were everywhere. Uh, the most eroded county in the state was Lincoln County, which joins us. <coughs> they had uh, had more more lands that uh, more land that was uh, considered severely eroded than any other county in the state. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard to imagine, unless you look at some old pictures, uh, just just how, uh, how, for want of a better word, how bad the land what had been abused. And I'm not blaming the, the folks. Uh, uh, we learned learned a lot. And, and our agency didn't come along till after uh, about the time of the Dust Bowl. In fact, that's why it originated. When the sand, when the dust finally blew over Washington D.C., well, they were finally convinced that something needed to be done in Oklahoma. And that's true. That's true. Uh, that's a Hugh Hammond Bennett <laughs> story that, that he he was making a, a pitch uh, for it, and he pointed it out the window, and, and the, the dust was in the air in Washington. <laughs> and so that, uh, I guess. If you want to say something, I guess that was a good thing in a way. <laughs> it sure convinced him. Uh, but, but Roosevelt, see, uh, it was his administration that, that really uh, got things going during for conservation. The, the CCC boys, and then later on soil conservation, all of the uh, Department of Agriculture uh, programs came along uh, during, during his term, and uh, the country was in uh, dire shape uh, economically and uh, every other way. And, uh, are we done? Not yet. <laughs> We're close. <laughs> Anything else you want to ask? Uh -huh. Anything else you want to say? I'll think of a dozen things when I leave you. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Yeah. Oh. No, I think I've said enough. Well, then I'll ask my last question. When history is written about you, what do you want it to say? How do you want to be remembered? <laughs> the uh, penny man. The penny. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else. That's all. All right, then. Thank you very much. It's been fun. And I'll, I'll give you a penny before we leave. <laughs> not for my thoughts, though. No, not for your thoughts. <laughs>